Peace. Well, hi there. We're trying an experiment today. We're, you're up a little higher. What do you guys think? Do you like it? <laughs> or are we too far away? We can bring him a little bit closer. We can get a little closer. <laughs> That's good. Oh, yeah. How's everybody doing? Um, I am excited to talk to you guys about aliens today. Aliens. And yes. I've got some, some stuff to open. And let's see. We've got. Do you have some stuff to open? I've got a few things to open. Wow. So it's going to be a fun day. But I told you. I informed you thusly. They're aliens. Lishi. <laughs> At least she doesn't believe me, but I believe you. I am zoring you thusly is what it has to be. Like <laughs> Why that. is that? Because of the Big Bang Theory. Yeah. Mr. Sheldon. Mr. <laughs> Sheldon Cooper. I, I don't know if you guys saw this study about cuttlefish, but it's really, really cool. And so I'll, I'll give people uh, a, a couple minutes to get here yeah. before I really get into that in a big way. But it's really, really neat. Um, also, I just wanted to say thank you so much. Oh, for for our moderators. Here, wait. New uh, Moonshine. Aurora Exotics, Aurora and Moonshine. You yeah, thank you guys. So so our moderators now have come to us from the what is it called? Discord, Discord server. Mm -hmm. How cool is that little fluff? Fix it. Well, I like it. It's just kind of casual <laughs> blowing in the casual water. fluff. It's fluff day. <laughs> okay, but. Uh, if you're if you're not on the Discord server, please go check it out. Oh, I've got so much. Oh, more exciting stuff. So on Monday, the reptile room was open for the first time since October of last year. It looks like Benny is here too from the Discord. And Benny, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but yeah, the reptile room opened up last uh, on Monday for the first time since October of last year because COVID is finally way down here in Utah. I mean, it's it's much lower than it was in October of last year. We, we went through kind of our first big spike. Uh, we didn't really have like a first wave of COVID here in, in Utah. It, it stayed pretty low and it's only been in the last, I guess starting in November, it spiked way, way up. And so the governor asked us if, if possible to not open businesses. And so, you know, we decided it was possible for us to not open our business. And so we kept it closed even well after the governor said it was okay again because, I mean, it was the cases were still really high and we didn't want to put our volunteers and ourselves in, in danger uh, at that time. But it's now low. I mean, it's as low as it's been in a long, long yeah. time and it's and continuing it's to go decline. down. And so it's like, okay, let's let's give it a shot again. And it was awesome. It was amazing. There, there were uh, 28 people that came, which is a lot. I mean, that that's uh, about as many as we can handle. It. Yeah, I mean, we want it to be small numbers of people because we want you to have an intimate personal experience. We want you to have time with each animal. We don't want you to just feel rushed. And yes. so like 30 people, that's a fantastic amount where yep. it's busy. There's always someone there, but also you're getting an intimate personal experience. And, and the groups could socially distance from one another. The, uh -huh. the room was big enough for that. So it was great. And, and the thing is, if, if we're finding that we're getting more people than we can have at any given time, we're just going to open for more days. We'll, yeah. we'll be open more days each week, uh, yeah. you know, but I, I was really surprised and we're open again tonight. So, so tonight will be the first Friday night ever, ever in the history of Clint's of Clint's Reptile Reptile Room. Room. Our first Friday night. That ever open. really made my ear ring. That Sorry. was loud. <laughs> <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm, I'm looking forward to it very, very much. So if you, if you're in the area and you can be there, be there. If not, remember you can come from anywhere in the world uh, via our live face to faces, and, yep. and you and I, and, or, or you and your group of friends and I, will will hang out at the reptile room. We got family. to hang out with Mr. and Mrs. Morelli. That's which is true. Probably a name a lot of you recognize from yes. the live stream. So it was we did awesome. A, a virtual one on one with them, and they requested that I be there, so I got to go see all their cool snakes. Yeah, that creatures. was the second second time somebody's requested they should be there. The other one is Anthony. Who I mean, honestly, because of live face faces, like he feels like an old friend now. Yeah. Uh, which is just amazing. It's so cool. What a what a small world we live in. Yeah. That during a pandemic, Clint here in in Utah can make a new friend in New York. Yeah. Or and and you know I've made other friends in Ireland and all over the world. You know it's it's been so much fun getting to do those. So. Uh, please do them. I mean, that's that still is is what keeps the reptile room alive. It is. 
it is a hundred percent what keeps the reptile room alive. Well, well, after last, after Monday, ninety percent what yeah. keeps the reptile 90% room alive. Ninety percent what I mean, but I mean, opening the reptile room to the public, like that's just for fun. That's just to help people, help reptiles be ambassadors for themselves, educate people. I mean, that's not really what is bringing in what's keeping the reptile. No, it's up. it's been you guys. It's it's yeah. been amazing. We never, I mean, never, never would have survived without you guys because once i mean you know before before we started doing the live face-to-faces i mean you know I, the the reptile room was closed it had never been open and and i was just like there was no end in sight to when we might be able to open it it was yeah. just like okay do i close it now or do i close it later after it runs us completely out of money like those were the only options and now honestly it's been such an amazing experience doing these live face-to-faces with you guys that you know i think we'll keep doing them Indefinitely, like I think that'll always be something. Really, we'll indefinitely. Do. Well, I, I would like to. I, I don't know. I, I, I love it. It's, it's, yeah. it's a great thing because not all of you guys can come here to Utah. Yeah. And yet you can still have some of that reptile room experience. But yeah, I want to just sorry to go on so long about this, but I'm really excited about the reptile room because when it opens, you see what it does for the community. And and you know, if you weren't aware before, you know, our Wednesday video probably helped you guys realize how much is going on uh, with regard to legislation attacking the reptile community here. It's a lot, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's not just Florida, right? Florida, Florida, obviously they need to do something. I think what they did is overly extreme and, and they need, they need some voices on, on the the side of, of keepers, but keepers that are willing to help and help them uh, achieve their objectives to get in there and maybe, give you a path to ownership for a lot of these animals, you know, as long as you can, you can demonstrate responsibility, that kind of thing. Right. Um, so, but you know, so there's a lot of work to be done there, but something needed to be done there probably, but it's not just there. It's not just there at all. It's all over the place right now. States everywhere are coming down with legislation and some of it is just craziness. And, and you know, the, we, we, we talked briefly in the video, you know, about how cats, you know, cats are a way bigger ecological concern than any reptile I can think of. Um, and and yet no, nobody talks about cats. And they don't talk about cats because cats are too mainstream. They're too beloved. You know, no, no, nobody, you know, you go after cats and you're done as a politician. And, and really our best, hell, uh, our best hope long term is that this hobby becomes as mainstream as cat keeping. Uh, I mean, you know, reptiles are more reasonable pets than cats in most cases. And, 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 and they're, they're delightful and, and obviously a much smaller ecological concern. And, but until the public knows them as more than the scary monsters of their nightmares, then they're always going to be the villains and they're going to be an easy villain to attack. Yeah. And, and so Anyway, just having the community come in there. I mean, there are a lot of people who come to the reptile room that aren't reptile people. And and they have a phenomenal time. They oh, just, like, keep going so on. So many people come who are not reptile, like, don't own any reptiles, not are not interested in owning reptiles. Like, it's just an experience for them. And it's an awesome experience. And and I, I totally get why they're having an incredible experience because they've never been through anything like that before. But something that makes me almost more excited still, I don't know which of these makes me more excited. Okay. But, but I'm so excited about the fact that people come that have reptiles that have more extreme sorts of reptiles than we even have at the reptile. Yeah. Right. So, so they're them having an experience with reptiles. That's nothing new at all. And yeah. yet they too are having a phenomenal time. And what I realize has got to be the biggest part of it is like you can have your own reptile room in your house and see your own cool animals and hang out by yourself. But where else can you go and be around 20 other like-minded people who are just as excited about reptiles as you are. Mm -hmm. And you can do it a couple times a week and just hang out there and it's cheaper than the movies and a lot more real. Not to mention Clinty's there and he's pretty fun. I'm pretty excited about him too. I might add. He's my best friend. I choose to hang out with him every day. (laughs) Anyway, it's, I'm, 
I, I, we're having such a great time. It's, it's such an incredible experience, and it's been awesome for the people. So you were talking about what it does for the community in U.S. Arc. I think we got sidetracked. Did you what the, 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 the reptile man? Oh, I'm just saying, you know, it, it, it helps make it mainstream. It exposes yeah. people to these animals and shows them this is what they are. And they go, oh, my gosh. You know, it's, it's a completely other thing than I think most people imagine. And and I'm so I'm so excited about it. Um, my mom my mom supports us a lot, and she really loves what we're doing. She loves the channel. She brags about Clint all the time to her friends and her brothers and stuff. Like she loves it. But at the reptile room, when I talk to her about like what it is and what we do there, she's always so confused. Especially before <laughs> it opened up, before she saw people coming, she was like. What do you do? Like all the time, no. all the time. We were there, like working on stuff, putting in clothes. She's like, together. "Is there any way you can get out of this?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? Maybe you should give the reptile room back. Maybe you shouldn't be putting your money on into this. Or like, she's just so confused. Like, you just hold snakes. You just sit around and hold snakes. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the thing about it, we had the same thing when we were looking for a venue. It's like. No one's ever seen anything like this before. I mean, you know, they've seen zoos and things, mm -hmm. but this isn't a zoo. Yeah. And it, it is just like. It's one it, of a kind and it's special. It really is special. It is a special place. And it's special to us. It's very intimate for us and personal. And we want you to feel that personal connection. When you come. Exactly. Anyway, it's, it's been, it's been so much fun and I'm so excited for tonight. If, if you can. Please come. Yes. Uh, we're open from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. And it's 284 South Main Street. In Springville, Utah. Yep. So if you can make it, make it. If you can't, you can always do a, a live face-to-face -face one of yes. these days. Schedule one of those. Those are easy to find, too. Just go to clintreptiles.com and scroll down, and it'll say schedule one-on-one -on -one with Clint. That would be awesome. Well. Cuttlefish? Cuttlefish. I mean, did I ruin it? No, they don't. I thought you were calling. It's the the right on the oh, okay. the right okay. on the live stream okay, good. or on the yeah. on the thumbnail. I'm the worst. I <laughs> always tell all the secrets. <laughs> so, why is the used dog toy up here? I thought That's that was one. our new decoration. <laughs> We've been decorating with dog toys all along. I just noticed it. Where's Where's the tooth? It's in the bowl. Okay, good. That's a weight loss. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if you guys saw this. I did post it on our Facebook page, but. There has been a couple of really cool new studies published about the intelligence of cuttlefish, okay? And I want to walk you through this because, again, they're much, much smarter than we know because they're aliens. We just don't know their language. So um, there, there's this fairly famous experiment called the marshmallow experiment. It got famous on TikTok, too, so probably oh, most people TikTok know famous, so, you know... <laughs> It's like that. But basically, they put a marshmallow in front of a kid. And they tell that kid, if you can wait 15 minutes, we'll give you two marshmallows instead of one marshmallow. So if you can leave that marshmallow there for 15 minutes, you get two marshmallows instead of one. And, and so, you know, there's a big payoff to being patient. Well, what they found is a lot of kids couldn't. Wait 15 minutes. Alicia Me? thinks that she would be one of those. <laughs> I would, you, you know I would be one of those. <laughs> I would not wait. But but there were there were also kids that could. And it also seems to be developmental. So so to some degree age-based. Mm -hmm. And but sure. but then but then you know Alicia still thinks she couldn't make it. Um, I couldn't make it as a 29-year-old. <laughs> so anyway, when uh when they do that, well, well, what they did too is they followed these kids down the road and they found that the kids that could wait were more successful in life, generally, on average, than the kids that couldn't wait. To, so, so being able to uh, put off what you want now to get something better down the road, at least that, that seems to be a, a capability that is at least correlated with long-term success. Okay. Well, they have seen before that cuttlefish, uh, if you offer them crab, which they don't really like in the morning, or something much better in the evening, that they will forego eating the crab in the morning in favor of eating the much better thing in the evening. But they weren't sure you know, exactly what was going on there. And so they set up this really cool experiment. Okay, So 
they had three symbols uh, that were on transparent doors. And, and they taught these cuttlefish to understand what these symbols meant. Because they're aliens, they're able to pick this up. Okay. If the door, the transparent door has a circle on it, that means that the door will open right away. If the transparent door has a triangle on it, then the door will open after somewhere between 10 and 130 seconds. If the door has a square on it, it will never open. Okay, so that's that's the way that they, they set it up. They, mm -hmm. And so they had they had the they had six cuttlefish that they trained to do this. They put these cuttlefish in, in a tank that either had um, I think well they always had a circle door. Can you hear my fish? She's in the pack and play next to us singing. So 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 what they did in the, is they, they, they had a circle door, and behind that circle door was a dead shrimp, which is a mm, so so food. Okay. And then behind one of the other two kinds of doors, which is either the triangle door that opens up after a delay, or the square door which never opens, they had a live shrimp. Okay, which is a really exciting piece of food. Mm -hmm. And and uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. A dead prawn, dead prawn, not a dead shrimp. In so, the circle door. So so circle door has a dead prawn in it, which is a mm, so so food. The live shrimp, that's the exciting food. Okay. And and if they went through the circle door and got the dead prawn, they would take out the live shrimp right away. And so they quickly learned, if I go for the prawn, I lose the shrimp. But if I, if I want the shrimp, I have to wait for the shrimp. <laughs> Unless it's behind a square door, in which case I could wait forever. It'll never come. Okay, so they taught them that. And then they, they put them in these various scenarios, okay, where it's either behind, behind the, the live shrimp is either behind the triangle door or the square door. And the dead prawn behind the circle door, which opens right away. What they found was if the dead shrimp, I'm sorry, if the live shrimp was behind the square door that never opens, they would go for the prawn right away. Just go for it. But if the, the live shrimp was behind the triangle door, which opens after 10 to 130 seconds, they'd wait. They'd wait. They wouldn't go for the prawn. And they would wait it's for so that. Crazy. So, so they they totally understood the scenario, right? They they understood they could always see the live shrimp. That's the thing; it's transparent, so they could see the live shrimp in both scenarios. But they knew if there's no live shrimp coming, I'll go get the prawn. Yeah. If there is a live shrimp coming, uh, but later, I will wait for that. So they would wait That's for something crazy. better instead of taking something good right now. Yeah. Just like in the marshmallow experiment, and they they would wait, uh, they would wait uh, fifty to one hundred and thirty seconds uh, in order to get it, which is on par with the amount of of waiting that you could get out of chimpanzees and corvid birds, which is like crows and magpies and things that are really smart birds. Uh, also parrots, you know, uh, these these animals wait that long as well. So, but these are these are really intelligent animals. And 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 this, I mean, the thing about the thing about cephalopods is they're invertebrates, and we usually think of inver invertebrates as not being that clever. They're all sorts of clever. We don't even know how clever they're they aliens. are. They're aliens. Yeah, because we don't speak their language. Yeah. We are only beginning to figure this out. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I'd be curious if you set up a human child with this situation, because with the marshmallow experiment, you were able to talk them through it. Mm -hmm. But imagine if you had to just demonstrate it to them, because mm -hmm. you don't speak their language and they don't speak yours. Mm -hmm. And, and 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 still did it say how long it took to teach to them? train them? I don't know. I, I don't know. They, they might. They detail. probably did say that, but I don't know that. Then they did a second experiment with these cuttlefish, which is is really cool. Same six. Okay, they had two targets, and the targets had a square on it, and that square was either gray or white. And when the cuttlefish started to approach one of the targets, they'd take the other target out. And if the cuttlefish uh, approached the correct target they would get a treat and once they could tell that the cuttlefish had figured out which one was the correct target they would switch which one was the correct target 
So and they would measure how long it took them to figure out that the correct target had changed. And interestingly, the cuttlefish that would figure this out the fastest were also the cuttlefish that would wait the longest for the good trim. That's so stinking cool. rad. So, so there's, you know, they, they were able to test intelligence in these guys in multiple ways. And the more intelligent cuttlefish were the ones that were also more willing to wait longer. That's so crazy. They, they saw the big picture. I think that shows a lot about my intelligence. Yeah. And, you know, and, and honestly, <laughs> honestly, if you're an animal that will live six months to two years, yeah. waiting 130 seconds for a meal, that's a long time. That's that a long, long time in cuttlefish seconds. That is long. <laughs> no, no more making fun of yourself. <laughs> um, we have quite a few super chats. Oh, All right. Let me Thanks get this Martha and, and I will start. Here's Come here, buddy. Here's our Flufferton. Oh, he's a fluff. He's a fluff. Our one synapsid reptile that we have. Well, except for kids. This is a. We should score these guys. What do you think? Score dogs? Yeah. They get a pretty well score. I want to score cats, but I don't know anybody who has a cat that would sit on our table for like 20 minutes while we plus B roll. Anybody, yeah, anybody in the greater Utah metro area that has the most patient cat in the world? Should we do a cat video? I, I, I've got some studies about cats to share too. Oh, yeah. well, I should have put a bow on Martha, but she's, open, so. <laughs> she's so cute, though. Mm -hmm. She loves Theo, and she really loves Big Daddy. Okay, I have never seen her do this before. We were at the reptile room. Clint put Big Daddy on the floor, and Martha was on my lap just reaching and reaching and reaching for him. So I'm like, I'm going to put her down and see what she does. She crawled right over to him and was just, like, patting his shell so gently. And Big Daddy would walk away, and Martha would just follow and crawl after him and pat his shell so gently. It was the cutest thing ever. Okay, super chats. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by my cute creatures. Mr. and Mrs. Morelia, hello. Oh, I know nice. them, no. I know them. Yeah, now, now we were friends for real. Like, yeah. It's so exciting. Um, they said, it was so nice meeting your family on Zoom and showing you our snake family. What are your kids' favorite reptiles? Okay, well, I can tell you Penny's very favorite. I can tell favorite. you Owen's. Okay, so Penny's I think Martha's favorite reptile is Big Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> Penny's, yeah. Penny's favorite animals are snakes. Her favorite snakes are ball pythons, and her favorite ball python is Sunny. He's at the reptile room, so you can come see him tonight. Yep. And uh, Owen always says Komodo dragon. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. And let's see. I don't know. Tom, let's guess. Uh, Tom asks for that. Um, they did a, su a super chat. Where's our button? We need to be. They said, super fun to watch another one of these. Hope your family is doing well. I'm currently about to feed my tag you. Here's a question. How often do you feed Gus Gus and what's your favorite memory of him? Favorite Gus? My favorite Gus Gus memory might actually be in our video about taggers because it's two-year-old Penny walking him on a leash. Yeah. My favorite memory is when we went to get him. Oh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, so, oh, that was the only question. No, there was more to that one, then. Super fun to watch one of these every time we Oh, how, how often do we feed that Gus Gus? Oh, yeah, how often. So, I, I will give Gus Gus fruits and, well, mostly veggies. I give him collard greens basically anytime I think he looks hungry and I have some collard greens and he shakes them and kills them and makes them all dead and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will give him a meal that involves protein. Uh, probably twice a week, and and then you know fruits and veggies more regularly, um, and then it, right now I'm feeding him less because he's he's cooling a little bit. I, I should I'll tell you I'll tell you an exciting thing that I'm trying to decide on. Okay, and, and I would actually really appreciate your feedback because it's a it's a gamble it's a risk here. Um, so Gus Gus, he's wonderful. And he's a popular fellow. Um, but I I would like, maybe even for the room, a little baby Gus Gus then. All right. Take, really? Yeah, well, especially because 
Uh, I don't want Gus Gus to yeah, get no, no. himself over handled and stuff. Yeah, and so, true. so we'd probably like a couple of tegus. <laughs> and so I've considered a, se a second tegu or something, another large lizard. Uh, and tegus are great, you know. And I, and I would consider a red tegu or a blue tegu also as possible mm -hmm. possibilities. Or, or, but um, I have I have a good friend that I trust a lot who has a very very healthy female tegu. Ooh. Um, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And, and we've been talking about maybe pairing them when, when they warm up. All right. Oh, now the wow. thing, the thing that makes me nervous is female tegus sometimes beat up male tegus because, I no, I don't, that. it's not, it's not, well, so, so I want to talk about how to minimize this risk, <laughs> but just, it's because the males are overly aggressive towards <laughs> trying to mate and they're not all that interested and so eventually they'll go and they'll I mean they they're smaller but they can do a lot of damage. <laughs> trying to nurse. <laughs> and so so anyway so I'm I'm uh, I, I wouldn't want Gus Gus to get hurt but we would only do limited inter limited supervised interactions. We wouldn't leave them together. Yeah. So I wouldn't think anything too tremendously bad could happen unless she you know bit his tail when he dropped it or something like that. Which, it's scary. It's probably not that likely, but it's scary. But but then we would have little Gus Gus babies, which would be amazing. That would be awesome. So anyway, I don't I don't know what to think about this idea. It does probably mean that we might have some some Gus Gus babies that would be available after a while. As that would be a possibility anyway. But it involves a little bit of a risk. What do you guys think of that risk? Yeah. Anyway, that's something that's on my mind. I don't know what to do. John P sent a super chat and said, enjoyed one, the one-on-one -on -one chat last week. It was awesome. Um, by the way, my son that was on the chat was the kid in the Chili's bathroom story from a couple of weeks ago. He did the great work. I remember that Chili's bathroom <laughs> story. That one really got me. I'm glad you didn't tell me before the face-to-face. -face, yeah, that's what you've been thinking of the whole time. <laughs> the tarantula selected, collected, oh. sent a super chat and said, support USR. Yes, please. A Draconia sent a super chat. Did you name the reptile room after a book in a series of unfortunate events? I didn't. I just wanted it to be, well, it's my reptile room. I love those books. I read all, the, most of those books in six years. I haven't read any of them or seen the movie. And I've heard that I, I am basically the guy from that. <laughs> so. Are you? Some, I don't know. Okay. Am I? No. Okay, I'm not. Karate no. Kids 002 said, we have met snakes local here in Mississippi. Do they make it pets? Heard it may be hard to find their food. Yeah, I, I don't know of too many people that are really working with mud snakes. They're very cool looking. But with so many awesome captive bred reptiles out there, um, <laughs> probably just better to go with, with something that's a little bit easier to, to care for and that wouldn't come right out of the wild. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Morelia sent another super chat. They said, when feeding crested geckos, do you dust with just calcium plus D or a multivitamin as well? Does it depend on the feeder, cricket versus roach? Oh, I, I would say it doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, uh, doing both occasionally, I think is just great. You know, um, it, the, I will tell you the thing that matters, cricket versus roach. Your roaches are going to burrow right into the ground. So you might want to feed them in a container or something. And if they do go into the ground, they're going to wipe off all that calcium or, or vitamin powder that you put on them. Whereas the crickets are just going to wander around all dusty until they get themselves eaten. Um, Noonshine, who I thought was... Um, Mottery? Mottery. Um, she sent a... They sent a um, super duper chat, a $20 chat. Super duper chat! Said Clint, our mutual friend from Discord, Aspen, asks if you can weigh up the pros and cons when trying to decide between keeping the crested gecko and Arboronia or Emerald species. He is struggling to decide. Ooh, so like a head to head to head <laughs> of crested geckos versus Arboronia or Emerald tree species. Okay. So, I'll, I'll do I'll do a quick version of this. Okay. So here's here would be some big things. The crested gecko is a little bit easier than either of these um, because, because mostly because it does need a basking spot. You know, it's, it's good at room temperature and it's going to eat mostly crested gecko diet, though the emerald tree skinks also like crested gecko diet quite a bit. So, but you're going to be doing more insects with Abronia or emerald tree skinks. 
Um, Abronia and Emerald tree skinks are going to be active during the day, whereas the crested geckos are only really going to be active at night. So during the day, they're mostly just asleep. Uh, they're different sorts of animals to handle. Crested geckos put up with handling. Abronia, probably kind of the same way. And they're probably the most likely to bite you of the three. The emerald tree skinks, I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> They're so friendly. Complete strangers walk over to the enclosure and they just pop out and they're like, hey, hey, are you going to get us out and play? They they love to play, but it's a different kind of thing. You can't just scoop an emerald tree skink very easily. They'll run away from you. Yeah. But they want to be on you. And so given the choice, that's where they'll be. Um, you know, I, I, again, you, I would recommend actually UV for all three of them, but but you'll need basking spots for, for Abronia and for for uh, emerald tree skinks, um, similar enclosure types. So I would say mostly it's like, how often do you want to get insect feeders? And when do you want them to be active? But personally, nothing beats emerald tree skinks. If okay. you can get captive ones, nothing beats them. Though Abroni, I, I would argue, are pretty good. A personality though, it's unreal. Um, Amar, our friend Amar, you Amar. haven't been a face-to-face -face in a long time. <laughs> We've missed you. Yeah, that's but very I'm glad true. you're here at the, um, at the live stream. I think he warned me the last time that it might be a little bit before you could do it. Really? Amar says, hope you're doing well. I asked last week which of your vids you would like me to share at work. Let me <laughs> alter it slightly. Which video do you think best represents your channel and what you're trying to do? Probably the intro video. No, because well, I I think I think the the nice thing of, right the nice thing about our videos is be most of them follow the same format, and so you know if you like one, uh, good news, there's buckets of them just like that, and and so it's hard to pick one that exactly represents what we're trying to do. Uh, I think you know, but but they all sort of do at the same time. And, and so I would say, you know, some of our newer videos, I mean, we've gotten a lot better with the quality of our audio and video and stuff like that. Um, and so, so uh, you know, maybe, maybe something we've made in the last couple of years, but maybe just the animal that you think that they would be the most excited about seeing. If it would be an invertebrate, just a second, in case you don't want to hear baby monitor, a baby getting put down for a nap. Um, and... So, but uh, let's see. So, some that have been very popular, though, Vinegaroon. The King Cobra one was fun, but but a little bit different for us. Honestly, if you want an older video, people seem to like the Green Iguana video. Um, you know, and, and I think I think that is important because I am always going to tell you what I really think. Right? My, the purpose of this channel is to help you make an informed decision about which animal you pick so you have a great experience. And because, you know, you, I can't tell you what your needs are and what you want and what your capabilities are, but I can tell you, like, what is it going to be like having this animal? And and so, you know, something that I think was important about the green iguana was before that, other than the Savannah monitor, I think, we'd pretty much only done videos that were part of our top five lists. So they were all videos about really awesome reptiles. People were like, oh, he thinks every reptile is the best. Well, no, I, but those were on lists of the best for a reason all of them and so so all of a sudden we came out with that green iguana video and people were like oh i never heard that again really after that and he's like he thinks every reptile is the best pet no i don't i do not and and so that's kind of a, a fun one along those lines um we're gonna have another good one tomorrow by the way that is one that i probably wouldn't recommend to most people it gets a a, a fairly low score um, but it is it is a reptile that a lot of people are very interested in. What is it? What is it? Tell them so they can be looking forward to it and be excited about no, it. No, they can't. Tell them. Next. Whisper to it to me in my ear. <laughs> All right. Uh, Boomer sent a super chat and he said. Um, uh, empty super chat. Oh, just the super chat. Thank you, Boomer. So thank you so much. Johnny R sent a super chat. They said, um, they said, pretty sure if you use the cuttlefish test on children, the children would drown. 
so true. That has been. And the children probably wouldn't want to eat live shrimp either. I don't know. I've seen children do some pretty weird stuff. Yeah, no, it's interesting. I, it, it, I mean, we can try it. We can try it and see how well they do cuttlefish thing. Chase Taz sent a super chat and said, can we see Gus Gus? Yes, but you uh, he's not here, so we would have to. We're currently in our home, and Gus Gus is at the reptile room mm -hmm. in Springdale. Um, so if you want to see him, schedule one-on-one -on -one or come to the reptile room. Do it. Benny sent a super chat and said, hi, Clint. Folks are starting to popularize speaking buttons that allow cats, cats slash dogs to communicate. Do you think any reptiles would be able to do this? Have you seen that? It's so cool. I have not. That, that so is... there's all these buttons on the ground, and it'll be like, wow. How about potty, some food? Or food, yeah, and they'll just go press the one that they want. I just want to go outside for no reason. <laughs> for no reason. For no reason. For no reason. <laughs> Theo's like, how do I get one of these buttons? <laughs> the thing I we've discovered, Leisha and I were just talking about it, is how incredible, at least Theo is, at communicating, at communicating yeah. way better than I thought a dog could be. Yeah. It's like they've been doing this for thousands of years. Yeah. I mean, he'll tell us exactly what he wants in the morning. I swear he does it. I was telling Clint, when he needs to go potty in the morning, he'll lick our hands. And then he scratches his his chest and his shoulders so that his um, collar shakes. And it's like a little, the little tags on it make a lot of noise. And I think he does it on purpose to wake us up. Uh, as far as your question about reptiles, um, you might be able to train some to do it. The main thing is it's kind of a limited number of things that they want to do, and they're usually pretty – they communicate it pretty well already. So it might be easier for you just to pay attention to your reptiles and what they're asking you for than for you to try to train but, the reptiles. But they're saying could a reptile do Well, I, I think it's quite possible. Which reptiles do you oh, Things like pegus and monitors. Uh, probably iguanas. Really? Um, maybe bearded dragons. Things like that. They would recognize voice commands? Well, they would They would recognize some symbol that they hit, and it would be a Oh, voice it would be command. a symbol. Okay. Well, isn't that how those work? I don't know. It's not all the time just being like, do you want to go for a walk? Do you want to go outside? And so, yeah. Do you want to go for a walk? Hit pound one now. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't. I guess I didn't. I didn't. Observe. What's the word? I didn't see. I didn't. What is the word? I didn't see the symbol somehow. Gotcha. Um. Yeah. No. No. But let's see. David? This one is from Ricky Troy. Mostly, they sent a super duper chat. Super duper chat. I mainly like seeing Muggle pets only in versus videos in which they are compared to our Hogwarts pets, like the dog versus Teddy video. Do you leave it? Is there anything? No. You got a package. Okay, so they're used only seeing muggle pets? Yes. And pets only in versus video in which they are compared to our Hogwarts pets, like the dog versus Teddy video. Mm. Yes. So they're used to seeing that? I mainly like seeing them. Oh, okay, so you'd like more muggles versus Hogwarts pets. Uh, yeah, give us some ideas for what good ones would be. There are only so many muggle pets out there. That's true. They, they, they keep, bunnies. Yeah, bunnies are probably a muggle pet. Hamsters. Yeah, that seems like a muggle pet. Guinea pig. Guinea pig, I don't know. It's a little more, you know, you know some of guinea pig, they're a little more hardcore. Guinea pig versus rats. Rats are hardcore. Yeah. yeah. I want to do a rat video real bad. Mm -hmm. I just want to meet somebody. I, I, need to, I need to get to know somebody who breeds pet rats. And who or who has pet rats that they've been socializing for a long time because a socialized rat is amazing. Um, Jace tested another super chat that said, "Just want to say that you are amazing, and I love to watch your channel." That's thank awesome. Thank you so much, and that's so kind of you thank in you. all the ways. Yeah, Dan E said, "Just wanted to say I love your channel, and thank you for reigniting my passion for rats." That's so that nice. is one of my favorite things to hear. Um, Sean P sent a super duper chat. Super duper chat. Said I let I took your advice and got some frozen pod chips to try and oh. eat my non eating ball python. Still no interest. Is it safe to try unsalted chicken broth to try and scent a mouse or two? Um, I mean people do that. I, I just keep an eye on weight, but yeah, and, and make sure that the temperatures of your feeders are high enough. Because they know. 
They can they can detect whether or not. Yeah, check the temperatures of your snake and the temperatures of mm, your yeah, enclosures. Yeah, and your feeder temperatures. That's what I would. Think. I don't know what I'm saying. Angel Martin said, "Have you heard of ozone machines killing reptiles?" I have not. I don't even know what an ozone machine is. Sorry. <laughs> uh, David G sent a super chat. Thank you for your vids. Ma'am, they brought in a lot of my days. Wish you and your family the best with the heart. That those Thank always you. make me happy to hear, especially during this time where where a lot of us have been very isolated from social contact. Like I'm so glad that that uh, you know our videos and live streams have, have helped a lot of you. It makes me really happy and feel really good about what we're doing and, and definitely needing to keep going forward. Yeah. Um, Mark sent you another super chat. He, he said, well, if you miss me so much, I just have to book one. It's been a while after all. Yay! Yay Amar. <laughs> Amar was one of the very first ones to ever do a super chat. Hey, so, well, well, a super chat or a face-to-face. I mean, face -face. a face-to-face. -face. And, and then to do multiple face-to-faces. Yeah. yeah. Um, David Shook sent a super-duper chat. Super-duper chat! Thanks for what you guys do. My wife and I always check out what Clint's score is on reptiles before we consider if we want it. Keep up the great work. Hoping to make a pilgrimage to Utah from Texas someday. Oh, That's awesome. we're excited to see you. We're hoping to make a pilgrimage to Texas from Utah someday. That is very true. Yeah. Um, one thing, one thing, I, I, I always, I always stuck because some people are like, "How can this get the same score as this?" You, the, the key with any video is pay attention to the individual categories, right? Like, like um, expensive or what is it? Upfront costs yeah. and and uh, availability. Those might be things that don't matter to you, or you know, maybe your, you maybe your local, you, you know, there's a breeder local to you, mm -hmm. and you can get, you know, where to get one, and you can get them cheap. That totally changes the game yeah. as far as that goes, and that that, that drastically changes the score. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you, you you know, pay attention to the individual category scores. The the overall score is just an average of the five categories, and it's not necessarily true that those five categories are all of equal weight. For you. Yeah, I like it. Good advice. Um, let's see. Ray was here, sent a super chat and said, I see a guitar and a ukulele. Who plays? I, because of my dumb arms, physically cannot play the guitar or the Clint, ukulele. He can't do this with his hands. He goes like here, but he can't be. Now you show him how a human does it. A human does this. Yeah. Not and he can't, I mean, do this it, is what, it up. This is, and people criticize the way that I Watch. handle big lizards because I don't put my hand flat under them. This is why. See, and like you can't physically, this is my favorite thing is to watch him do this. Do this, Clinton. <laughs> she laughs at my disability. Uh, <laughs> it is my favorite thing in the whole world to watch him try to touch his shoulders. So yeah, I played the guitar and the ukulele. Um, but I can put sunscreen on my whole back. It's a trade off. I mean, I can too. It um, wouldn't be a great coverage in some places. But I oh yeah, yeah, and show show them the 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 Marines ninja. Oh, you thing. know how like in grade school bullies would come and like do this to you, and it really hurts. Clint can like go on forever, and it has <laughs> never hurt him. So I have normal range of motion because what is a normal hand go? I can do this. Can you go that far? Well, mine's going down now. Mine's going down. No, it's not. Yours yeah, is it still is. up. Mine is pointing down. Mine is pointing down. No, what? it isn't. It's pointing up. This part of your palm is going up. Now? Now it's now. Let it's me see yours flat. again. Okay, so that that's that's flat where you were. Uh-huh. And mine will keep going. Mine so, which is that's up. about the same amount as I'm lacking rotation this way. No, it wasn't. Okay, let me try. Okay. Okay. So your your palm is still going up, which is exactly yeah. where mine is right now. Yeah. Okay, so that's as far as you can go. Right? Uh -huh. okay. Mine keeps going. Oh yeah, you're right. I and and it's just it's just the same amount that I can't do this way. So I have a normal amount of twisty, but my arms. But are unfortunately, twisty. you can't get change like this. No, that's well, I, like I said, I have my changes. I have to come in like a beggar. I'm like, <laughs> my seventy five cents, please. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> like a beggar. <laughs> Now you know. Okay. Let's see. We have one more super chat and then we'll pop over to Patreon. This is a duck with the heart from Low Life Exotics. That's the that's the heart duck? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. 
Duck heart. Fantastic. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. Um, Patreon. Patreon. So, if you hmm. haven't joined Patreon. I've also got letters. Let me forget to open do because Jason works really hard to make it really awesome for the people who support us. There's a lot of really cool things. You get extra videos, you get early release of videos, and the extra videos are awesome. All the time, comes like, man, I wish everyone was seeing this one. Yes, this so cool. there are so many of them that are like yeah. torture for me because there's something really cool in it, and I'm like, oh. I want everyone to see this. So extra videos, early release videos, and just to name a few. And one more is that you get to submit questions for the live stream and all the noise get answered. So this is from David Shook. What's the smallest uromastics and where can I find a captive red lizard? Is it the Somali uromastics? I don't know. I don't know the smallest uromastics off the top of my head. Um, but there are a lot of breeders. I think Morph Market has dramatically increased its scope of animals that it covers. So, so you might be able to go to Morph Market. Um, let's see. It seems like King Snake used to be a good place. Um, Facebook. Probably what I would recommend is join some Euro-specific Facebook groups and then start asking on there who they recommend to go to as a breeder. Um, because, I mean, they're, they're agamid lizards. They're not crazy hard to breed for the most part uh, and they're super cool and babies are adorable yeah stephanie stone says my son wants to try his hand at breeding our red eyed tree frogs is there mm. any chance you'd be able to give info on the best way to make a rain chamber and pump to get water to continuously pump? well that isn't really complicated to do uh you, i mean you need water you need pump down in the water and then so your 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 pump will go uh, be attached to a hose that'll go up, and you can you can bring that into like PVC pipes that you can have across the top, and and you can have them all hooked together, and you just drill small holes in the PVC so that the water drips out as it comes through. You, could you do it like in a square with a couple that go across, and then you can kind of just connect them to the lid yep. wires or something? Yep. All of that. Awesome. And so, so building building a rain rain chamber isn't super difficult as long as there's water in the bottom. I sound like I sounded like a proper Utah just then oh, yes, when yes. I said or something. <laughs> and you should totally watch our video from when we went to Tinley because I had never seen other than albinos. I had never seen more for like tree frogs before. Oh. They had crazy. I didn't ones. even know more for like tree frogs existed. Mm -hmm. They had all red ones, all purple ones. What? They were all sort of, and then we have them in the That's video. Amazing. They're so cool. Yeah. And I'd never seen that before. Enough. And they had tons too. So. Uh, That's really cool. Good luck with that. Brand. That's awesome. Um, is he meal? Sorry. <laughs> so, hey, Clint, could you please do a video on how to take care of your reptiles during the disaster, i.e. a hurricane? Uh, I can do my best. Um, so someone also who has some videos that you could watch already is Camp Kennan because sometimes he has to prepare for hurricanes. Oh um, wow! I wonder what he does. That is interesting. And, and so you know you could you could watch his actual process. Yeah. And but yeah, yeah, disasters, especially lately, you know, that's been something really serious to consider, especially the really uncommon disasters. Um, you know, because. You know, what do you do when you lose power? What do you do if you have to move your reptiles very quickly? Are you prepared mm -hmm. for those sorts of things? Mm -hmm. and, and probably, honestly, um, you know, being able to move your you – know, get your reptiles out of their enclosures and into something to move them to a safe location very quickly, that is probably something that a lot of us couldn't do. I mean, you know, it's something I could do a little bit easier because I do a lot of – traveling with reptiles mm -hmm. for, for presentations and things. So a lot of them, I've got specific bins and stuff labeled for them. So I can yeah. pack them all up and load them up and go. But, but, you know, if you, if you're, I, I remember when we first started doing that, you know, I'd spend quite a while scrounging around for all the little yeah. tubs and stuff I would need for them each yeah. time. We kind of had to prepare because a fire got fairly close to our house a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. a wildfire. So we kind of were talking about what we would do, how we'd pack them up and where we'd stay and things like that. Yeah, so so that that is a good idea. That's a good idea, and, and definitely something. You know, here's here's the big picture: is I can't tell you 
what the most likely disasters are in your area specifically. And so, you know, just taking time on your own to sit down and think through what are those disasters and what would I do? That's probably the biggest thing. And, uh, you know, if, if you if you run into a situation where you're like, well, if this disaster happened, I have no idea what I would do. Yeah. Then reach out to other reptile keepers maybe in your area and go, what, what should I do in this situation? Um, Sean P says, I have an upcoming enclosure shuffle for my animals, and I'm going to end up with an empty pin gallon long. It's a good small reptile that can live permanently in a tiny long. I prefer snakes, but lizards are acceptable. We actually have a whole video on that. Yep. On uh, small small reptiles specifically for ten gallon tanks. Yep. Now there is there here here would be my biggest takeaway though. There is something called empty tank syndrome, yep. which is I've got an empty tank and now I must put something in. And the reality is, you don't have to put something in. You know, I, when when we moved over to the reptile room, I was able to move a lot of the animals that were here over there, but in enclosures that I had just in my garage unused because. You don't have to use every enclosure that you have. My, my biggest recommendation would be, you know, if you find an animal that you're really passionate and excited about that could go in a 10-gallon tank, get it, right? But, but I mean, a 10-gallon tank is like the cheapest aquarium you can buy. So if that's going to waste, it's not really that big. Short of answer thing. is. But, but, you know, there are you know, smaller snakes like male hognose snakes and male Canyon sand boas would uh, be snakes that could potentially be housed in a 10 gallon aquarium. Those are the ones we talked about in that video. But but my short answer is you don't have to get something. And, and if you find something that you really want, but it needs a 20 gallon, get a 20 gallon, right? Like get something you want instead of getting something because of a bonus. Um, Evan said, Evan said, hi, Clint. I'm planning a summer trip to Utah to go to the zoo and aquarium. Obviously, the reptile room is on my list of destinations. Do you think it will be open in June? I sure hope so. Well, we are, we are just taking it one month at a time. Honestly, one month and right honestly, now. like one week at a time. Because if all of a sudden there was a massive COVID spike in Utah, we would be closed down again, yeah. you know, and, but, but. You know, it's it's good right now. It's looking good into the future. Huh. You know, so so March is looking good. Yeah, we're hoping April looks even better. You know, hopefully the summer looks better than the winter has looked, yeah. and and it just keeps getting better. You know, come next winter, we'll we'll see. We'll just see. You know, with the vaccinations and everything, maybe maybe this will be behind us. Maybe variants will have come up. And if worst comes to worst, and we are open to the public, usually we are still doing. Private events. Yeah, so yeah. You book the entire reptile room, and you'll get clipped by yourself in the room all by all to yeah. yourself. Except for at the very peak of of this spike, you know, I was willing to take very small groups, mm -hmm. just just us, yeah. you know. So it's you know, there's not a lot of people in the room. So it is possible often to come, uh, you know, especially if you're making a crazy trip. But hopefully, we'll be open for public hours. Yeah. Email us. Um, Courtney McConkey. Sorry, not Courtney. Corinne McConkey said, cuttlefish, squid, and octopuses are arguably the most intelligent invertebrates. Which one is the smartest? Have you ever read the book, The Soul of an Octopus by Cy Nelson? That is a difficult question to ask, I would, or to answer. I would say the answer is probably not squid, though they're, they're smart. Mm -hmm. um, they just live in a different sort of a world, mm -hmm. for the most part. There are some squid that live differently than, than the others, but but I would say mm -hmm. octopus or cuttlefish, they're, I mean, they're, and it's probably very comparable. And they're, you don't even know how smart they are. Yeah. We don't. That's no. crazy. So it's hard to say which one's the smartest of two animals that are real smart, and we don't know Just how, how smart, smart either of them are. Yeah. Um, T Swizzles, um, by the way, if you're just joining us, we're still answering questions from Patreon. So T Swizzle says, as an intermediate, intermediate keeper, I'm looking to start getting into breeding. My question is, as a beginner to breeding, what species would be good would be a good starting point for me? It'd be nice too if it's a species that could benefit the hobby more than, say, leopard geckos and ball Yep. So I'll tell you. I mean, things like crested geckos and ball pythons and leopard geckos are relatively easy to breed, yeah. and there's a lot of morphs out there, so they're a lot of fun to breed, and there's a lot of demand for them, generally. 
And so they're relatively easy to sell. Um, and, and so, so that's, that's all good. My, my biggest recommendation though, would be to f- make sure that there's a market there for your babies, whatever you choose to breed mm-hmm. before you start bringing them where you can end up getting buried. Mm-hmm. I think personally I'm throwing out animals that I think everyone should be working with. And if you can get some captive bred emerald tree skinks and raise those up as your breeders, do it. <laughs> I think I, I, I honestly think they will be everywhere as soon as more people start working with them because well and, and, and you know when I've talked to people, we have drawn attention to them and, and I've, I've spoken to a lot of people who are like, I can't produce enough of them. And I will tell you, if you end up with like 10 emerald tree skinks and you don't know what to do with them, I will buy them from you wholesale. So mm-hmm. if, if that's what you want to do, like I, I, I can promise you, you know, at least you as one individual, I will, I will make it, I will make sure you're not inundated with emerald tree skinks. Yeah. I will take them off your hands if that happens. <laughs> there you go, to you, Swizzle, it's a deal. Joseph Allen said, hey, Clint, this summer slash fall, I'm hoping to breed some of my wild-caught Pope's gray tree frogs. I don't think I'm allowed to sell or transfer them with a commercial permit. Personal keeping is fine. So my plan is to release the offspring. I don't keep back where their parents are from. My question is, at what life stage would it be best to let them go? I know it's a bad idea to let wild thought adult herbs go as they acclimate to activity to captivity. Would their survival be better or worse if they wait until they're froglets slash juveniles, or is releasing them just as bad, just a bad idea overall? That's a tough question. It's a good question for it's a, it's a, It is a great question. So here's the deal. Um, releasing animals, bred in captivity, back into the wild can be a really great thing to do if you're trying to restore a struggling population, mm-hmm. especially one where you're not getting new recruitment in the wild. For example, here in Utah Lake, we've done a lot of work with the June sucker. I've actually got a paper on, on these guys. Uh, and, and the June sucker is a, it's a, it's a fish that lives down in Utah Lake, but they historically breed up in the mountain streams, up in the, up in the lakes and the mountains. So they swim up the streams. Well, they, a long time ago, channelized the streams. So they made them straight, not the June suckers, but humans made them straight and it made it basically so the June suckers couldn't get up there. And June suckers are an extremely long lived fish. So there are still big old adult June suckers down in Utah Lake, but we hadn't seen any new recruitment in like decades. So they weren't, they weren't going up there to breed. And so, you know, to preserve the species, we were breeding them in fish hatcheries in large numbers and then releasing them into the lake. You know, we're also trying to restore the bends and stuff to the rivers. We're trying to, trying to get them back to where they can re- Why return to them. Why make channels? Oh, Probably, probably for agriculture and stuff. I, I'm, I'm not sure all the reasons why you channelize a river, but people do to make it more usable for humans. Uh, but anyway, it's... So under those circumstances, releasing a lot of captive red ones can be hugely beneficial. Um, huh. The problem with releasing them into the wild uh, if you're moving them into areas, different areas than where you caught the adults, then, you know, you might be altering the local gene pool considerably. Also, any diseases they might have contracted in captivity, you're now releasing into the wild and that can endanger the wild population. So there is there there are considerable risks associated with releasing wild animals. One thing you should check on is whether or not it's even legal to release even native species back into the wild, especially if they're captive bred. I would say, unless you're part of a very deliberate conservation effort, yeah. don't do this, yeah. would be my, my recommendation. Um, Anthony said, hi there, my friends. How difficult would jellyfish be to keep snakes? Actually, I've been considering doing a video on jellyfish. Uh, would you like that, by the way? What do you guys think of a jellyfish video as an idea? 
So one of, I mean, it would depend a little bit on the type of jellyfish that you were keeping. Um, one of what I, I don't think it's excessively difficult, uh, depending on the type of jellyfish, but the type of enclosure that you need is very unusual and it would be difficult to get one. It needs to be circular and it needs to have a, a circular water flow going on because essentially like they're always a moving. They don't really have any brains to figure out like what's going on if, if they're in a box. Okay. Cause that's, that's just not something that ever comes up for a jellyfish and they have no brains, so they can't figure it out. And so, you know, it, it needs to be going in a circle so they can essentially be on a treadmill Interesting. all day long. They, you, you'll, um, you'll notice if you go to an aquarium to look at like moon jellies and stuff, they're always in a big circle. In this live chat, Jeffy Carston said, would it be possible to book a video call from outside of the U.S.? Absolutely. Absolutely. Anywhere with the internet. All over the world. Mm -hmm. We've had Ireland and the Netherlands and all over the U.K. And have you had any from Australia? And mm -hmm. South Africa, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, South Africa for sure. But I'm trying to think. I've had any from Australia. So all over the world, absolutely. One thing that's a little weird on it is it asks for a phone number and sometimes <laughs> the phone numbers, like they don't go in because Square doesn't realize that people from all over the world will have different phone numbers. So you don't need to put in your phone number, just yeah. put in your email address. Yeah, just make sure your email address is right. Yeah. Good question. Um, do you want to open up some of your mail? Yeah, I should do that. Okay, so I've got, I've got two letters that are both from uh, Michael Fitzhenry. Yeah, and he, you opened one from him last week. And, and they, these were sent on the same day, so I think they're, it was just based on weight. Okay, so this first one has Yu-Gi-Oh cards in it. Ah, Hold them for a second. And I'm gonna scroll through these. these are my first ever Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Not mine. You've had Yu-Gi-Oh cards? My friend Nick played Yu-Gi-Oh. Whoa, dude! Dude, <laughs> that's a really amazing drawing, actually. Look at this drawing. That is hardcore. Is it one of the cards? I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. I can't see the picture. This one? Whoa, that, you might have gotten it. Are there any that would be even more? That is intense. Yu-Gi-Oh cards and an awesome drawing and a letter. Oh, this one's read aloud. How do you get a stubborn, picky, not hungry, baby Brazilian rainbow boa to eat? That is actually a really good question. It, that seems to be um, one of the more difficult things. That's now, so boas usually eat really well. And I'm trying to think. Seems like I. It seems like I, I studied on this a little bit ago. Um, so you said stubborn, hungry, not picky. Or let's see, stubborn, picky, not hungry, baby. So it it baby sounds what? like Brazilian rainbow boa. Mm. So it sounds like it eats. Oh, I get to create my own deck. Uh, it eats. But it's picky about what it eats. But it, you know, if, and if that's the case, probably just keep feeding it that, yep. uh, and then maybe open this one. Well, I will, but I'm trying to answer this question. Hurry, okay. hurry! Uh, so that'd be why we start. Okay, second thing. Wow, that's fun. The official rule book for Yu-Gi-Oh Yu -Oh! trading cards, because I don't actually know how to play, and Yu-Gi-Oh dual links. I'm going to have to read this letter. I think I yeah, have a lot to learn. Yeah, Thank yeah. you so much, that's though. That is amazing. Thanks, Michael. Should I open the other one, too? Open the other one. Okay, here we go. Who's that from? This one is from Scott Briggs in Rhode Island. That's cool. I've always wanted to visit Rhode Island. He loves yeah, stick, stick him. Respect him. Sticker bug. Who in the world? What? Oh, it has my name on it. Where? Dr. Clint Lightblood. Whoa! Bodacious. He has a bodacious sticker. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Stinking rad. Well, hi there, the chameleon. This is amazing. We were wanting stickers like this, remember? Yes. Just recently. Yes, just this week I was like, I want some 
little chameleon stickers like this. Yeah. Show them. Okay. Let's do that. That's Whoa! awesome. Okay, so there's there's this, which I thought, but look. Stinking rad. Well, hi there. Holy cow, this is amazing. Show them the bodacious one. Bodacious. That's awesome. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm overstimulated. <laughs> Let's see if there. I think I think that's yeah. maybe all of them. Yeah. Yeah, but I've got a ton of each one. That is so which cool. I am Let's a do it like like a flip book. I am a saver of things. Yeah, he is. And so it all it really helps me to have like tons of something. Yeah. Because then I feel at liberty to start using them up. Yeah, that is so fun. I you love pass this. that to kids who come to the reptile room. Well, let's not go crazy. We're gonna well, need them for all our name everyone. tags. Everyone. Do our name tags? Our name tags have. Chameleon. Chameleon. This is so cool. That's so cool. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Wow. Okay, you have some more super chats coming Holy in. Holy smokes. Super chats. And it looks like, okay, awesome. Okay, okay, let me look. La, la, la. What have you guys thought of the higher angle today? I think it actually looks pretty nice. I think so too. I think it's pretty similar, just a bit more flattering. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> David Shook sent a super duper chat. Super duper chat. Um, they said thanks for what you guys do. My oh, I already read that one. Sorry guys. Okay. Oh, that was are, an extra Ricky, super duper chat. Yeah. Ricky Troy Mosley sent a super chat. <laughs> I love you guys. You are all great. You yeah. all are great. <laughs> Thank you so much. And then he sent another super chat that said, "Any ideas when you guys might start up the podcasts again?" Whew. So, There's been a lot going on with our little team. Yeah, and we've been, yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot. But I would love to start doing that. I mean, honestly, except for filming during this whole COVID time, we haven't gotten together very much. You've probably seen, we've, we've done some of the podcast, but it's always been over Zoom. Uh -huh. And I would, I, I mean, I'm, I'm so excited for when we can get back to that on a regular basis. That would be, that would be amazing. That would be just fun. That makes me feel like. Like uh, I can breathe a breath of fresh air. Yes. That's really fun. Um, so, yeah, there are still some coming up on Zoom every so often, but hopefully we can get back to normal podcasts. That would be um, oh. Amar said, booked. See you Tuesday. Yay! Yay, Amar! That's so exciting. I'm so happy you booked again. It's been a long, long time. Um, Noah Chestnut said, what are your thoughts on the lemon frost leopard gecko one? Oh, let me, see, let me get a picture of it so I can... I don't. Does it have any weird health things? As far as I know, it doesn't. Let me find out what's going on with a lemon frost leopard gecko. Lemon frost. Um, and Mr. and Mrs. Marilia said, "You need to sell stickers and posters. Oh. I want a poster on my reptile room wall with a wink face." Um, that's a great idea, but I want to know what you would want the poster to be. Like, would you want to see a picture of post a pic a poster of Plenty, a poster of like guess guess what? do you want on your poster i need to hear that question again because i'm i'm run into something okay okay so it's a, it's a it's an article from nature and it's uh a, a rid of aroma associated with the lemon frost color morph and leopard gecko so um and along those lines david shook said put hats on the merch site hats I want hats too and ties. Alicia doesn't think anybody would buy ties. But I don't well, I think it would be iconic to have a tie because Clint wears ties, but I don't think people wear ties, so why would they buy a tie if they're not gonna wear it? Fair enough. So it looks like in addition to the color morph, breeders are also observing um, tumor-like skin lesions. Johnny R said lemon frost makes me think of yellow snow. Which, uh, I don't know, I don't know what that does to them. Um, and you know, and th this is here, I, I will, I will tell you a thing. I don't want to go too deep into this, but you know, when well, it, they're interesting looking geckos, but really weird. What are, where, where are the lesions? I don't I don't see any here, but um, so that I I I, I want, I'm gonna I mean this is this is full disclosure here, okay, um, like a lot a lot of my 
my opinions on spider ball pythons come from the fact that I've been around a lot of spider ball pythons mm -hmm. and I've seen that in the vast majority of cases and like, and it seems to be very heritable, the difference, it doesn't seem to do anything to them that's detrimental. And, but I will also tell you when I hear stuff like this or, or, uh, um, Who's the other leopard? Enigma leopard geckos, uh, jaguar, carpet pythons. You know, my my knee-jerk reaction is like, we don't breed it then. Like, why why would you do that? Like, you know, it, it just seems like an unnecessary risk. And and so that's my knee-jerk reaction on this. Now I have no idea if those skin lesions cause them any problems. Um, yeah, I have I have no idea what's going on. You know, it to like me, you need to do some more research. I need, I need to do more research, but to me, like looking at it, you know, it's I, I think they're kind of not there's so many cooler looking leopard gecko morphs that I personally would probably not choose to work with it. But at the same time, I've never chosen to work with spider either. A few snakes that I wound up with happen to have it, and that's how I have some experience with it. But I've never gone out and been like, I gotta get a spider ball python, and I think I wouldn't yeah. do this. I've never wanted an enigma leopard gecko, I've never wanted a, a jaguar jungle carpet python. Even though I, it's my understanding that a lot of those do great, it's still like it's not worth it's not worth it to me to deal with all that. No. Uh, Lauren Bevel said a T-shirt with a tie on it. Mm, okay, that's and a there's, good idea. there's a few more super chats coming in. So, uh, Mr. And Miss, let's see. There was Lauren, one about a poster though. I want to hear that one better. I wasn't. Mr. Mr. And Mrs. Morelia said that they want a poster for the reptile room wall, and I was asking. What would you want? Like a poster of Plenty, a poster of Gus Gus, like a poster of what? Yeah, that's a good idea, though. Yeah. We should have posters. People have emailed fairly often and asked for a signed picture of you. <laughs> 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 so there's that. I can, uh, that's, <laughs> that makes sense when I think of like people that, like, like if I had a signed picture of Steve Irwin, yeah. which Anthony has one. He does. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If I had a signed picture of Steve Irwin, like, I'd be over the moon. Yeah. So I totally get why people want that. It's just silly that they, to me, that they want that to me. Yeah. Um, also, somebody who came to the reptile room on Monday when we were opening had a little notebook and they drew a picture of Clinty on yep. it and had Clinty signed under it. And some other people brought the, the nicest Polaroid camera I'd ever seen and took a picture of Clinty. Really? Yep. I didn't know that. It was a phenomenal Polaroid camera. Um, let's see. So, yeah, I want to know what you want on your poster. Suck it. Um, Lauren says, I'm late, but joined in time for stickers. My work laptop is covered and would love to stand print around the office someday. Like, that must be a typo, but I stand. would love Have? to show print around. Yeah. Would love to. So we need stickers. I hope Jason's taking notes. And somebody said in the thread that they really want hats. Yeah, there. hats. Hats, I would like a hat. Ties, like, posters. Can you imagine a cute hat with just the chameleon on it? Signed photographs. Really I would wear that. A signed photograph? No, I would wear a hat with just the chameleon. I would wear that too all the time. Trucker really style? No. I, would, I want a trucker style. I want I want the kind with the Velcro back and it's all fabric y and floppy. Like our Cabela's hat, but with just the chameleon on it. I don't want that one. I want trucker style. <laughs> okay, let's see. Anthony sent a hundred dollar super chat. Thank you, Anthony. Thanks for being here. I hope you had a great birthday on on Tuesday. Yes. You talked with him. Yeah, we got to we fantastic. We came over and visited Anthony for a little bit. He carved out a little bit of his birthday so that we could wish him happy birthday and sing him the full version. The full version of our of our family happy birthday song, and it sounded terrible. So you're welcome. <laughs> Anthony said, hi there, my friend. So I'm a bit busy today, but I wanted to pop in and say hello. I was so happy I got to see you and the family for my birthday. Much love. Also, while I'm here, I'll ask you a question. Are there any cryptid species that you think could actually exist? Cryptid? Oh, boy. Now I got to I gotta Google words, guys. Sorry. Anthony, and then Anthony knows cool Ray words. Ray was here, said, sent a super chat and said, I'd buy a tie. I'd buy a I'd buy a lint tie. A lint? Yeah. Oh yeah, that'd be a good. Lint tie. Okay. So okay, so this is like cryptozoology cryptid. That's what I figured, but I wanted to be sure. Okay, so here's a list. Um totally. Right? There's there's those little sauropods that are supposed to be in the Congo. There's been all kinds of crazy big animals in the Congo. Yeah. Unlikely, but 
Maybe. You know, the um, plesiosaurs in Loch Ness seem unlikely. Um, Bigfoot. Maybe a lot of unexplored wilderness out there. Yeah. And, and while we're on the subject of aliens, there have been tons of things about UFOs released by the government officially this year. No, we're not even talking about them. I know it's not crazy. Yeah, so Bigfoot's crazy. next year. Yep. Just wait. Uh, Dan, Dallin, who actually helps us out at the reptile room, said, what if you got the animals to sign the photos? I know the Hopal Zoo does that. The Hopal Zoo has, like, the rhinos. Do you know how hard it is to teach a rhino to sign a photo? Though? No, they just put paint on the bomb and then the rhino sits on the photo. <laughs> uh, in fact, somebody was talking to us about that the other day, that we should probably guess, guess paint pictures. I don't know if I want to paint my reptile stuff. Though, Big Daddy would do it. He could do like his hand on one or something. The, <laughs> oh my gosh, you say this. But um, no, when no. I was in high school and I had to get a gift for my friends for their birthdays, I often got them a book called Why Paint Cats. <laughs> they used cat safe paint, but they had painted the cats. Really amazing artwork on cats. Especially when you consider the difficult. Have you thought of the logistical challenges of painting a cat? You're crazy. <laughs> you are. You are. Full they had of another book called "Why Can't Cats Paint," which is paintings done by cats. But then they had paintings on cats. Oh, oh darling, said I want a Clint's bowler hat. Do you know Clint's history with bowler hats? I love bowler hats. You've got to know that if you're gonna want that. I don't understand. Because bowler hats are red. I know you love bowler hats. Yeah, you have a bowler that's hat. That's why somebody else had one. Bowler hat guy. You're weird. You're well, weird. You know. know, right? Of course. <laughs> if we weren't weird, we'd be boring. That's true. Yeah. That's what I was about to say. Mm -hmm. At least you're not boring. I like hanging out with you yeah. and stuff. <laughs> Should we wrap it up? We, we should. Are we through everything? I think we are. You guys are awesome. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for geeking out with me about the aliens that live here on Earth. And just, you know, thanks thanks for all your support, for the super chats, for all the comments that come through. You guys yeah. are such an incredible community. We are so just blessed and thrilled to have you in our lives. I mean, you know, you just oh, you, you don't find you don't find communities like this. Super chat. I agree. You guys are amazing. And especially for an online community, it's you're insane. kind, you're it's sincere, you're genuine, you support us, you're wholesome. Like, I just love everything about You guys this. are the Emerald Tree Skinks of online communities. <laughs> that is quite a compliment from my Lindsay. Okay, this last Super Chat that just came in said, Who's it from? Noah Chestnut said, you should do something along the lines of coloring books like Snake Discovery does, maybe color by numbers. I didn't know Snake Discovery Snake does. Discovery has a coloring book. Books. That's awesome. It is. And then Ash and Aaron Animal Adventure, or sorry, Ash and N Animal Adventure sent a dollar to the chat, and that's it. This, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Was there no question? Nope. I'd buy the tie. Aurora Exotic said, Thank you, humans. <laughs> Bye, Clint's humans. You guys are wonderful. As always, like and subscribe, and we'll see you real soon. Thanks. It's a long reach these days. Yeah. Bye, guys. <laughs>